In the history of art, prehistoric art is all art produced in proliterate. Prehistorical culture is beginning somewhere in a very late geological history, and generally, continuing until the culture either develops writing or other methods of record keeping, or makes significant contact with another culture that has, and that makes some record of major historical events. At this point, Asian art begins, for the older literate cultures. The end date for what is covered by the term does vary greatly between different parts of the world. So here's the example of prehistoric art, the Great Black Bull, one of the many incredible paintings adorning this prehistoric palace. The depiction is anatomically correct but powerfully stylized in both outline and detail, such as the elegant horns, the nose, lips, and hooves, almost 4 meters long and 2 meters high. Through sympathetic magic, perhaps these early humans believed that by drawing these images, they would help to guarantee plentiful herds and good hunting. Another theory is that it was believed that man had to paint these images to replace the animals that he would hunt and kill. Whatever the motivation, it is clear that the painting of these images was important, and the careful observation of nature that is evident here is remarkable. Corsay is a prehistoric cave art inspired by April Gamusa. The student used only pencil and crayons in making this. The artwork has very similar features to prehistoric art because it was generally thought that the ancestors who lived thousands of years ago were illiterate, animal like creatures that live in caves, live on things from stones, and grow and fought with their neighbors by walking them on the head with a wooden club. Asian art refers to the many types of art produced by the advanced cultures of Asian societies with some form of writing, such as those of ancient China, India, Mesopotamia, Persia, Palestine, Egypt, Greece, and Rome. The Pergamon Altar Classical Greek art changed rapidly as Greece itself went through wars and imperial transformations. In what is called the Hellenistic Age, it became much more emotional, sensual, and even sensationalist. The furious sculptures on the Pergamon altar, which can be seen in its very own museum in Berlin, are full of passion and psychological drama. throughout the years believed that art isn't meant to be studied like science and math. They thought that art flows from the soul, twists your consciousness, and decorates life with its beauty. These rebel artists, driven to impart their own style and artwork, were the innovators of the very short but highly influential movement known as Art Nouveau. But what is Art Nouveau? Art Nouveau is a French term which means new art. It is an ornamental style of art that flourished between 1890 and 1910 throughout Europe and United States. Art Nouveau is often characterized by its use of a long, sinuous, organic line and was employed most often in architecture, interior design, jewelry and glass design, posters, and illustration. It was a deliberate attempt to create a new style free of the imitative historicism that dominated much of the 19th century art and design. Examples of Art Nouveau Gustav Klimt's The Kiss Klimt's primary subject in his Art Nouveau paintings was a female figure. His popular work, The Kiss, is one of the most instantly recognizable examples of his work, and one of a few paintings of his that features a man. This piece is a notable work from his golden face which is considered a leading example of the Art Nouveau movement. Flowery First is an Art Nouveau-inspired art by Sheila Muya. The student artists use poster colors, watercolors, pastels, markers, and glitters. She also incorporated the colors that are most prevalent in Art Nouveau, such as birds. 